Ricard Gronberg, you are the first uh, international coach to uh, stop by the Dragger Cafe. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. We're going to talk about your NHL interests and potential opportunities in just a moment, but we're here in Kasicha at the World Hockey Championship, and uh, obviously, you know, you're focused on advancing into the medal round and uh, claiming gold yet again for Team Sweden. But before you do that, let's look back to last night's game, a loss 7-4 to Russia and uh, a tough one overall. I mean, clearly you and Team Sweden were disappointed. Yeah, it was a frustrating game. I think uh, the first pair, I think we played excellent. I mean, we are sticking to a game plan. I, I think we only gave up uh, five goal, or five uh, shots on that, that period and uh, kept them on outside. I mean, they have so much power up in front that we uh, played very, uh, very smart defensively. And uh, of course, it was quite a bit of disappointment when uh, you know, the goals started rolling in there in the, in the second period. And it was kind of tough to, to stop the bleeding, um, even though we, we knew even before the game that we we're more likely going to be down here, right. uh, being a third, third place in that uh, bracket play since the loss of the Czech Republic. So um, the plan hasn't really changed, but it's always frustrating when you let that many goals in the second period. And now you're poised to play Finland in the quarterfinals. And historically, that's always been a real emotional battle. And I suspect that it'll be the same this time around. Yeah, it is. It's always a, a big rivalry, uh, you know, especially for the Finns, you know, yeah. since we're a little bit bigger country right, right next to them. Uh, but at the same yeah. time, I think, uh, um, you know, why, you know they're, they're a little frustrating to play against yeah. because they're very, uh, um, very organized. They play in uh, uh, very uh, smart hockey out there. It's really easy to scout them because you know what's going to come at you. And uh, but at the same time, they're doing real well. So we, uh, we, we know what uh, it's going to be a very tough game for us. It's an active cafe. Hey, it looks it's, pretty uh, good, doesn't it? Unbelievable, yeah. <laughs> we'll feed you, we'll yeah, look after you, you don't great. have to worry about that. Uh, let's talk about some individual players. I mean, William Nylander of the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, has had a wonderful tournament to this point, if you focus on the individuals. 17 points in seven games. Is, have you seen something from him that's been different at this World Championship? Uh, well, I, you know, since the last time I worked with him was uh, Cologne uh, World Championship uh, yeah. two years ago, and obviously he had the MVP award, uh, playing an excellent game for us, and yeah. you know, us winning the gold medal. Uh, um, I, I see the same kind of uh, you know game, you know, from him right now. So, uh, you know, everyone knows he's an offensive power, and he can put the puck in the net. I think he's he's doing uh, all the hard work as well. I mean, he's back checking and and. Uh, uh, you know, being as dynamic as I, I, I seen him uh, right. being at different levels. So, uh, you know, I've been fortunate to work with him under 18s, under 20, and as well as uh, with the national team. Uh, so I know Willie quite, quite well, and uh, I think he's an excellent player that, uh, you know, in right right environment, he really excelling. So if you look at this past season for William in the National Hockey League, I mean, it started late because of the contract stalemate. Do you think that that had a heavy influence in the fact that he had an offensively off season? So in saying that, you know, do you think that this will be a big confidence boost for him and an effort to go hard into the offseason and get ready for the NHL again next year? Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, having success at this level and bringing it next year, I know it's a shortened season for him. And um, it, it was a tough season for him. It was yeah. frustrating, I'm sure, coming in halfway through and, and uh, um, obviously didn't produce the way he wanted to produce. And, um, you know, obviously now being here producing, I think it's going to lead into a very excellent season next year. I, I think it's a great signing by, by the Leafs. I think he's going to be a, a great member of the squad for, for, uh, for a long time. Uh, uh, so, you know, uh, he, uh, like I said, he's always played real well here. Yeah. And, and and, um, you know, I think it's going to lead into a great uh, next season for you him. You believe he's a world-class talent? There's no question of it. I think he, he was, uh, um, a few years ago, he, he, uh, he got hurt when he played Junior World Championships, uh, you know, the second shift, I think, or second yeah. period or something like that against the Swiss. And that was, uh, that was tough for us because he was really dynamic in that tournament. I, I think he was, uh, you know, obviously our best offensive player and everything else. So, um, you know, he, uh, he's really... Uh, um, always uh, excelling at the international level, and uh, you know, obviously uh, been producing as well for, for for the Maple Leafs. Except except for this year, had a, probably a really tough yeah. season. We'll talk about another Canadian player, Vancouver Canucks property, Elias Pettersson, who's uh, poised to win the Rookie of the Year in the National Hockey League. What makes this young player so special? 
I think when you're looking at it, everyone's looking at his talent. Uh, his offensive, uh, gifted uh, player, obviously, but uh, uh, I like his work ethic. I yeah. mean, he's out there. You know, he didn't get the goals he wanted to start of the, the tournament, so he's out there shooting the puck and he continuously trying to work on, on getting better and, and the strive of getting better. I mean, he's watching a video. He's, uh, he's always looking at being a little bit on the edge of, of uh, making the next step, and, and that's what makes him uh, an extra talent, I think. It's not just uh, that he is a talent, but he worked himself to be as good as he is. And, uh, uh, he, he competes. He really yeah. competes out there. He skates really hard, and he's a, he's a dependable player. Is there another Swedish player historically that you'd compare his game or that you think he's tried to model his game after? Maybe it doesn't have to be Swedish, just another player that he reminds you of. I'm, I'm so bad at that. I'm, I really don't compare <laughs> players. I, I right. see individual players and what they're bringing to the table, but um, you know his vision of the ice and, and the, you know obviously his finish is, is yeah. tremendous. Uh, uh, but again, I mean this is the second World Championship in a row. I'm fortunate enough to be able to work with him and, yeah. and just see him the, the responsibility he takes out in the ice and and, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm talking about you know working the tough areas and, and back checking and, and doing the little things right uh, is really his com competitiveness is really up there and, and, and really like what I'm seeing so far. So you. You were recently hired by the Zurich Lions, uh, you know, a prominent club in the Swiss League. You know, myself and a number of my North American media counterparts speculated that uh, you'd get a look and you'd talk to some NHL clubs about a potential opportunity, be it as an NHL head coach or as an NHL assistant coach. Did you get close with any one team aside from maybe having a, a conversation here or there in the NHL? I, I, I talked to a few teams, and you know, uh, according to uh, what they told me, they, they, I was on the list. Uh, it didn't seem like I was on top of, the, of uh, some some teams' lists. And, and at the end of the day, I, I wanted to be a head coach. I wanted to be a head coach in a in a professional level, uh, and I think that's going to build my resume. And, and when Zurich came up with his offer, I think it was too too good to, to pass up on. I, I think it's uh, the top uh, place to be in Europe, really. And um, you know, great organization, the way he presented things, and. Um, you know, it, it was uh, it was like I said, it was an offer that that was too good to, to pass up on. It's a two-year deal, so it's not a lifetime, obviously. Um, do you feel like you're ready to be an NHL head coach at this point? Well, based on on uh, working with professional players here, uh, NHL players, top of the top. Uh, uh, top of the league and, and everything else, and coach against top of the league players, uh, you know, and, and done so successfully. I feel like I'm I'm ready to do it, and at the same time, I'm I'm looking forward to to work with players every day at uh, the professional level in Zurich, and and uh, you know, obviously, um, you know, have success there. I mean, that's going to be uh, at the end of the day, you need to keep producing and, and making sure that uh, people know that uh, you can be successful with with the concepts you're bringing into an organization. I think that's uh, that's very important, of course. Describe yourself as a coach, if you're going to make the jump, and I guess it doesn't matter whether you make the jump or not, what type of coach will you be for the Zurich Lions? Uh, I'm a hybrid. I mean, everyone's talking about, yeah, I'm born in, in Stockholm and, and uh, from Sweden and everything else, but I've been working in North America for, for 20 years and played and, and, and work as a coach. So, uh, and then obviously uh, U.S. educated. So, yeah. um, and, uh, you know, when the Federation, Swedish wow. Hockey Federation, invited me back to work with the Federation teams, there was a lot of people talking about he hasn't coached in the Swedish level, uh, Swedish professional league, and, uh, and then getting these opportunities to coach. And um, what they saw was just the hybrid, uh, uh, hybrid point of, of what I could bring to the table, right. uh, you know, everything from understanding the, the, the European culture and the Swedish culture in particular to bring in the North American aspects of things, of, of structure and everything else and bench coaching. I think um, that was uh, the attraction for the Federation to, to lure me back yeah. uh, to, to Sweden, if you like. And, uh, um, and so I, I think, uh, you know, I, I think the, the training part of, of the skill development and everything else, the European side, uh, I have that in, in my, my baggage as well as uh, um, I feel like, the, you know, the, what I think the North Americans are very good in, in bench coaching and, and, and man management uh, when it comes to the team. I think if you bring in those uh, two concepts together, it's, uh, you know, it's a pretty good combination. Well, the hybrid description is valid because you are a dual citizen. <clears throat> you married uh, an American woman. Um, you've got two children. You went to school and, and played in St. Cloud. You've coached in the United States, so it wouldn't be that significant a leap for you, obviously. No, and, and, and the way I see it, I, you know, where, the, where are the players coming from that play in National right. Hockey League? I mean, they're coming from Canadian Junior Hockey League. I worked in Canadian Junior Hockey League and the CHL with the Spokane, and with the Spokane right. Chiefs yeah. and, and the U.S. College and the U.S. Juniors. And, and obviously, I've been working in Europe now for the last nine years, seasons. So, and more or less, where are the players coming from? Those are the environments where the players come from. So, I think I can um, understand what, what players are coming from, if they're coming from Saskatchewan or if they're coming from, from Stockholm. I, I uh, have a little bit of background on, on each. So, 
Um, so I think that's, that's uh, also one of the, the advantages, I think. Well, and look, the, the, the hockey world is a relatively small place, but it's relationship-based, right? So it almost sounds and feels like you need an NHL owner or an NHL general manager to just give you a chance, maybe take a risk if you want on you. Yeah, at the, at the end of the day, I mean, I, you know, interview me and, and see if, if I'm a good fit for an organization. I think like, like anyone else, I think there's some, some tremendous coaches right now in National Hockey League. They're, they're, all those guys, they're, they're coaching there. Obviously, there's a reason they're there. Uh, they're, they're, they're top of the, the, the craft, if you like. And uh, at the same time, I, I think I can bring a little different outs, uh, outside perspective to things and, and maybe do it a little bit differently. And right. I think, uh, you know, uh, um, that's the way uh, the Swedish Hockey Federation, when they brought back, I can maybe challenge their truth a little bit. And it's been a pretty good marriage so far. And, uh, you know, uh, taking on Zerg now is going to obviously add on to my experience of uh, working every day with the, with the professional level and, and obviously a top team with a lot of expectations. I, I, I love to work on with, uh, you know, under a lot of expectations. If you coach a national team, especially a Swedish one, right. they expect you to win every year. And, uh, you know, obviously we've been fortunate enough to win two straight here, but uh, it's going to be a tough one starting out tomorrow. So. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I like to live under expectations and, and, uh, and produce. Well, it's time to eat. So congratulations on the new job with Zurich, and uh, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you.